the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift this night. And I kept thinking, truly speaking, and trusting God for grace that we will understand the significance of this all over the world um, this day is being celebrated some ignorantly some with understanding some emotionally but the most important thing is that we are taking our time to acknowledge Jesus and I just thought to share a few things um, with us that I believe will bless us and then prepare us for the communion the first thing I want to talk about is eternal life. I just want to talk about a few things tonight. Um, more like a charge to build and prepare our hearts. The reality of eternal life. The Bible says this is the testimony, the record that God has given us eternal life. Write this down. The word eternal life um, it's not a very accurate communication but um, it was the best that the translators could do because the word eternal is not a very good rendition everyone has eternal life everyone has everlasting life are we together now everyone created by God doesn't matter whether we fell from whatever the fact that we came from him satisfies the condition to have eternal life that's why when evangelists preach they don't say will you spend eternity the question is location not the possibility everyone will spend eternal life the idea of death as we know is not cessation from living is the translation from one dimension of existence to another and that translation comes with certain possibilities if you are with god then it's called life everlasting if you are apart from him then it is called death but that does not mean you will not live again are we together the idea of what we know to be everlasting life is from the greek word zoe please i want us to understand very simple exposition but will hold the key to our victory eternal life is a kind is a quality the idea is not another life the idea is an all-surpassing life in quality like you go to buy stuff in the market and they tell you this one is fake or generally for everyone and then they take you into another room and they say there is another one if you have the money they can bring it down so eternal life is not one of the many lives this is what you need to understand eternal life is a quality of life that has sustained within it certain possibilities that only in christ would they manifest being in christ is the secret to activating that life is a life pregnant with possibilities and the nature of that life is such that the possessor of it should be like god are we together so whoever by any means can have access to that life there is an implication that that life should cause in you it should begin to produce certain effects that reflect god if by any means a plant has that life that plant will start behaving like god are we together if by any means a handkerchief possesses that life that handkerchief will begin to behave like God. Enshrined in that life is capacity to release all the multifaceted possibilities that are in God. It is God's own life. It's not an inferior type. So when the Bible says this is the record, that God, out of his benevolence, has given us Zoe, a class and a kind of life, then the Bible says that that life is in his son. So the condition to possess that life is that you must accept the son outside of jesus there is no possibility of sustaining such a life now there are other kinds of lives that you can access you can access a life 
assisted by the realm of the spirit it may not be eternal life are we together now i can go to a native doctor to program a mystery in a charm and aid me to live a life that is higher than the normal human life so i will be able to demonstrate possibilities that may not be affordable to the natural man but it still is not eternal life so we are not talking of any life that is above the human life there are many kinds and quality of lives and living that are above the human life but are not god's life are we together when you meet a rich man although it's all human life because of the quality of what he or she eats and the children their health and the possibilities that come with the kind of life would be far different from someone who eats once a week once in two days are we together now when you meet someone who um has had access to certain drugs that can aid vitality you would find that whether they are supplements or whatever it is there is an advantage that those provisions create to such a person that will reflect in the quality of his life from another so when jesus is talking about eternal life it's not a cadre of lives and then his own is the highest no no eternal life is a class of life incontestable and incomparable with any other it's a class of life that reflects who god is he programmed all the possibilities in him like a software and encapsulated it in that life so that whoever receives that life receives potentials potentials notice my choice of words receives the potentials to reflect all that are in christ and all the possibilities that are enshrined in the person now many christians come to give their lives to christ we come out for an altar call we recite all kinds of things like many will be doing shortly but very few people pastor jakes really understand that kind of life are we together and not understanding what we have received will shortchange us and for many people their idea of eternal life is we only received an escape from hell which will be useful one day so for now let's keep it and go back to our normal life at death it becomes activated that is the idea that many people have about what we call eternal life so they say are you born again they say yes what they mean is i got that thing that saves me from hell but it's somewhere hidden i will keep living my defeated life and then if for any reason death comes is the trigger i bring it out as an escape are we together now the bible says whatsoever is born of god the word born of god is if it is god that introduced the seed that gave birth to it has in it it says overcomes the world not because of the possessor but because of what is inside the possessor of that life whatsoever is born of god has capacity to overcome the world and it says this is the victory that overcomes even our faith that's something i'll be discussing shortly so eternal life is not life after death eternal life is god's life that grants a man ascendance to release the possibilities of god here and now are we together it is important that we understand this it will reflect in the quality of your life and it will reflect in everything the moment i give my life to christ brothers and sisters the bible says listen to me carefully it says that i have been called as a result of that initiation out of every tribe out of every tongue out of every nation and by implication out of the limitations that come with those systems are we together let me tell you something about eternal life eternal life is a fact one of the tenets of the christian faith is the fact that when a man declares the lordship of christ over his life he is a possessor of eternal life it's a fact there are many tenets what we call the pillars of the christian faith number one of them is that salvation is only through jesus christ 
you have to know what you believe salvation salvation is only through jesus christ the bible says there is no other name under heaven given to man by which men must be saved the first tenet of the christian faith is the exclusive authority of christ to be the only one to bring men to the father no prophet no priest no apostle no prophet no religion no sect can claim to route you through another path to the father the bible says no man cometh to the father except by me the authorized medium to access the father and the life of god is jesus christ you are not a christian if you don't believe this number two salvation is by grace apart from works the second tenant of the of redemption the christian faith the pivot upon which everything we receive is salvation as far as receiving the life of christ comes it is by grace through faith and not by any ritual the word works there does not mean no action that's not what it means there is an action your faith is an action are we together the works there give an idea of ritualistic activities i don't have to slaughter an animal i don't have to go to the mountain in israel to bow my head i don't have to face the sun or face jerusalem all of those ceremonial rituals have been ended the bible says christ is the end of that law not the end of action the end of the law are we together now there are three dimensions of the law not all of them left you have to understand this there is the revelation of the law that is the revelation of the character of god that will never change it predated the law it it will never change the universality of god's character is consistent whether from the old testament the new testament the soul that sins will die nothing changes it grace only intercepts it but that reality is still a fact are we together number two there is the ceremonial activity of the law that has been abolished the observation of sons observation of festivals and and so on and so forth in a way to know god is been abolished are we together number three the rituals the rituals that men practice in an attempt to atone for their sins so when the bible says christ is the end of the law it doesn't mean that the coming of christ changes the character of god the universality of god's character is a fact i am the lord i change it not are we learning something tonight you have to understand the tenets upon which you stand that number one jesus christ is the only way to the father number two that justification by faith is an act of his grace you must understand this it was an activity that no man could qualify to even participate and help god so he had to do it by himself the only responsibility of the believer as far as the impartation of eternal life is concerned is to believe and act by faith according to romans chapter 10 from verse 8 and 10 it says who shall ascend to heaven and come he said the word is nigh thee in thy heart and even in thy mouth the word of faith that we preach right that if you confess that jesus is lord and believe with your heart you shall be saved for with the heart man believes unto righteousness the bible says and with the mouth confession is made unto soteria salvation so justification is by faith i don't come to god with a goat hoping that if if any priest asks you to come with a goat you see that he's not he's not practicing all of that again are we together now very very important number three the third thing you have to understand is that the holy spirit is the custodian of the life of god the holy spirit is the custodian of the life of god it is in the office of jesus the son to introduce you to that life but the personality that holds that life within you is the spirit of god and that only in partnership with him will you have capacity to release the possibilities in that life it's called the fellowship of the spirit you must know this if you want to walk as a believer 
the holy spirit represents the ministry of christ now every time the bible says in christ it means in partnership with the spirit that hails from him i can do all things through christ in partnership with him the holy spirit is the custodian of the life of god and the one who makes it possible to release the potentials there listen to me very carefully you can be a possessor of the life of god but not a manifester of the possibilities contained in that life there are two different things possessing eternal life by confessing christ is a fact has nothing to do with your feelings but walking experientially in the reality of that life has to do with your partnership with the holy spirit so he says grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge first peter chapter 1 verse 3 says according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness listen carefully according as his divine power hath given us how many things all things that pertain unto life and godliness that all things was shrouded in a mystery called zoe brought by the holy spirit his very presence is the proof of Zoe in you he's the witness the spirit of adoption are we together now and then the bible says but they are accessed through knowledge according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness it says through the knowledge here is here here is the big confusion in the body of christ through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue the next verse says wherefore has he given us these great and exceedingly precious promises that by them by releasing them we may prove experientially that we are partakers of his divine nature haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so i have eternal life but that eternal life is a possibility potentially speaking is at work in me it will never stop the devil from buffeting you but in partnership with the holy spirit manifesting as various things including the spirit of revelation that paul prayed for in ephesians chapter one he was talking to people who were already born again but were not releasing the possibilities that came with that life and he says for this cause for as a as a token of my desire for you to walk in these dimensions i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of revelation wisdom revelation in the knowledge of him that your heart although has received eternal life that it be flooded with light are we together now then he says that you may understand the power that was exerted when he raised christ from the dead etc etc so i can be born again you can be born again but the reality of the implication of that life may not find expression. That's why the Bible says it is by grace. Available by grace, but accessible through faith. Listen carefully. Available by grace, but accessible through faith. And the word faith there does not just mean believing. The faith there is a summation of every partnership that you have to go through in satisfying the condition to release that so grace provides it faith hallmarked by your obedience releases it this is the equation of the believer's work if it's not available by grace it cannot be accessible so when we partner with the word of god we are not ignoring the grace of god we are receiving it our obedience is a token of our reception it is available by grace but received through faith so when i type it is not the law i know that my prosperity and open heavens has been available by grace but my obedience is a proof that i'm interested in seeing it work in my life god cannot assume you are interested you he gave you a will and your obedience is partnering with your will so working out your salvation is not the law it's called partnership it's called koinonia it is the token of your expression it is the token of your interest to god that you want to see everything in him find expression in you zoe the life of god received by many experienced by few 
received by many experienced by few there are many possibilities that are enshrined in that life number one the bible tells us it's an indestructible life maybe let me finish what i started saying before we discuss a bit i was talking about certain pillars are we together the fellowship of the mystery that comes through partnership with the holy spirit number four the reality of righteousness righteousness Kenyon defines righteousness as the ability to stand before the presence of the father without a sense of inferiority condemnation and guilt um i i agree with that except for the fact that righteousness is another name given to the nature of god the very nature of god at work in a human is called righteousness not just an ability to stand that is the effect of righteousness it's not righteousness the effect of righteousness is that the possessor can now stand blameless but that's not necessarily the definition are we together now righteousness the nature of god at work in me the authorization to be able to access his spirit righteousness number three number what number five is that in christ and christ alone is dominion a possibility in christ and christ alone is dominion a possibility please understand this this dominion thing people chorus around as if they don't need god without god dominion is a mirage dominion means exercising sovereign power over situations over circumstances and over the forces of darkness write it down dominion the ability to exercise sovereign power sovereign authority over situations over circumstances and over the forces of darkness is only a possibility in christ every other thing outside christ is negotiation and pacifism not dominion are you hearing what i'm saying if a herbalist tells you he's trying to drive a demon it's not dominion through the mysteries of the kingdom he will pacify the spirit it's called occultic pacifism that's why the demon can be angry again and say the sacrifice is over so you have to renew it but dominion is exerting sovereign control anytime any day and remaining there not renewed by anything listen there is no sacrifice in the village that is done once and for all are you hearing what i'm saying everybody come on this is africa talk to me africa there is no sacrifice that is done once and for all whether you are aware or not somebody goes somewhere smuggles himself into a shrine and renews it can be per annum can be per two years or can be per when the gods are angry when they start manifesting the priest will now say the gods have not eaten and you are eating so people begin to die and what happens they slaughter a child or an animal and pacify that's not dominion that's negotiation that's not dominion Bishop Oedeko calls it a far above mentality. That's dominion. Where you are in a class that potentially speaking, you don't have any reason to relate with the vicissitudes here. And if at any point it comes, listen, let me tell you something about eternal life. Eternal life, listen carefully. Eternal life is not a life void of challenges, but it's a life assured of complete victory. Now, thanks be to God who always always not sometimes now thanks be to god who always causes us to triumph the next time you say that you have the life of god don't think you are saying you have a designer watch a designer shirt no you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are God alone and right now through the good times and bad you are on your throne you are God alone listen if I give you a millionaire's ATM 
and I say look for some reason for just trusting me I reward that trust by giving you an ATM potentially speaking has more money than you will need in your life this is recession so an example with money is a very fruitful one it will help people understand are we together he gives you an ATM are we together now but for some reason you have to be trained to know that that ATM is a fact that there's money inside it's a fact that potentially speaking you have access now you may move around with your friend that you used to eat with before it does not stop that the fact that you are a current possessor of that ATM experiencing the possibilities someone must be introduced to your life or a document must be introduced that is a map that guides you and says stand before a machine the name is ATM and you slot it and you are patient the dynamics of the operation this is where knowledge and understanding comes and you can hold that ATM forever and stand and swallow saliva in front of a shop that the ATM can buy the whole shop are we together now now you are crying to the one who gave you the ATM and he's saying I have made available so out of his love giving you the ATM is enough but he sent someone to come and guide you but that person is so gentle it will take your cooperation so he says look we created this ATM it's not like they gave us we understand how this thing works and he said no 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 no. I went to school just hold on when I am difficult this is what many people do so you hold this ATM for years and Satan comes around and tells you this thing is only a small card and he says it's a small card put it in your pocket and you put it in your pocket and move around this is what makes Christ look weak in the life of men this is what makes the Word of God look like it is of non effect so in spite of the fact that this reality is a fact knowledge of the systems of God the provisions that have been made in place everything we do in the kingdom is not adding to what Christ has done is accessing through partnership the mysteries of the kingdom that releases those possibilities so that after five years of working with God my life should be able to reflect more of God now than it did five years ago not just in terms of finances and all of that in terms of ascendance in the spirit I should not fear five years later what I was afraid of five years before I should not be a victim five years later of what I was a victim of before no. I prayed for a gentleman here I believe he's here who he was in the school of ministry he had a dream and somebody appeared to him in the dream punched his hand and he woke up physically with a punch with blood many years before would look at it and say hi hey, this is a serious issue and go and shout like fools around but when I saw it I said I want to touch it so way so way this is not the issue of prayer there is an implication to the life i hold let my the life of god make contact with that infirmity the way god's life possessors of divine possibilities i want you to take away take your eyes away from your challenge if you want to believe this because that's what satan will use to mock you you are a possessor of that life why are you barren five years don't mock yourself and then you say it's true uh -uh. there is still a provision because to make sure that you release this life he still gave on to some apostles and prophets and look at all the provisions he put in place he gave you his life gave you his spirit gave you his word sent gifts in the body so that we are not without excuse if you fail you neglected the systems of god you neglected his life so you go to hell you neglected his word so there is no growth you neglect his spirit no direction you neglect the gift so no lifting anyone that fails in life listen to me it's not god he neglected the systems the life of god the spirit of god the word of god the gifts that he has sent Just like there are people here looking at me who have never been interested in the life of God. 
the life of God is the most superior reflection of his love and benevolence more than giving you a pastor more than giving you a prophet and apostle more than giving you the Bible more than giving you a whatever it is you have to receive them in that order you don't receive his life even if you receive his prophets you will not maximize your stay the prophets can only assist as guided by God they cannot impart life a man of God can impart every other thing aside from eternal life I can impart healing I can impart an anointing I can prophesy to you and your life will change but I cannot say be born again I can even stand before God to declare your sins forgiven right in terms of the limitations that stand between you but that is only a possibility in Christ please I want you to believe this this issue of being born again is not a choice it's not a choice people buy phones now their phones get missing and they cry for days because owning a phone now is almost not a choice let's institutionalize salvation let's make it part of the fabric of growth to make it look like you don't say okay if you want to you want to you better come out whether you know it or not you want to are we together eternal life what you believe about Jesus is important you must believe that he came from heaven if you believe he came from Israel you are not saved you are not a child of God there is a footballer called Jesus he cannot save men he can play football but he cannot save men please let's clarify these loose ends quickly before we continue there are things you have to believe Jesus himself said in John chapter 6 I am the bread that came from heaven he told us his location that he came from heaven you must believe that he came from heaven number two you must believe in his incarnation his incarnation is the mystery that made the world flesh the womb of the woman is that mystery the mystery that made the world the eternal word that was with God John 1 verse 1 become flesh many Christians don't know this you must believe in the incarnation not reincarnation incarnation if you believe in the reincarnation of Jesus Christ you are an antichrist incarnation incarnation the word became flesh number three you must believe in his humanity he didn't just come and die and went away he walked upon the earth partook of the weaknesses of men there is Jesus the man he walked upon the earth the Bible says he was in every way like us tempted yet without sin if you don't believe in the humanity of Jesus Christ you will shortchange yourself from walking in the fullness of the life of God you must believe in the dominion he exerted by means of the presence of the Holy Spirit in his life not by means of being Jesus the Son of God when he came upon the earth he stripped himself of his Godship and submitted himself as a model to the ministry of the Holy Spirit so every result gotten in Jesus life was not because he was Jesus it was because he was under the influence of the Spirit so that we are not without excuse the same Spirit that made Jesus the Christ is the same spirit that will make Jake the Christ is the same spirit that will make Ejimi the Christ is the same spirit that will make Joshua Selma the Christ believe in the humanity of Jesus he demonstrated the sovereign power of God flawlessly above creation above principalities and powers he demonstrated to us in his earthly life that Zoe is a possibility are we together you must believe in the passion of the Christ theologically speaking the entire event that took place beginning from the upper room the communion where they received the Holy Spirit was where they had the communion are we together down to the experience in Gethsemane down to Pontius Pilate and Herod who used Jesus as a scapegoat to become friends they were enemies but Jesus look how powerful Jesus was even before he died he reconciled enemies then you must believe in every activity 
the mystery of the whip for by his stripes we are healed the mystery of the crown of thorns that was put upon his head an exchange for our dominion restored you must believe in the mockery that he received you must believe in the fact that he was on his way to Golgotha the place of skull as an exchange for us Jesus did not die on the road he was hung on a tree it was necessary that he had to be crucified if Jesus died and it was not by crucifixion he would not be able to take the sins of the world there are conditions to be able to take the sins of the world number one you must become flesh number two your blood must be sinless number three you must enact a mystery that transfers the sin of men to you and that mystery is called the communion the communion is not what Christians take in church the communion is a sacrament there's a theological name for it. it is called the doctrine of interpenetration the mystery with which two people become one is what is used in marriage two separate entities by covenant still different personalities but one in the spirit and that is enacted through the communion John chapter 6 are you getting blessed tonight John chapter 6 let's read help us media let's read verse 35 okay just for time's sake let's run to 53 just four verses 53 to 57 John chapter 6 53 Jesus is speaking now then Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you he's introducing them to the mystery that will make the sins of the whole world come into him you have to understand it's not just that he died for us we died in him so you need to find out how we entered him because Galatians 2 20 says I am or I have been crucified with Christ not just that he was crucified for me are we together Jesus died for me that's an act of love I died with him that's identification there are two different things it's not just enough to believe he did it for you you must believe that you did it in him that's why we are seated with him but we must trace where the journey started verily verily I say unto you except ye eat of my flesh listen carefully ye eat of the flesh of the son of man and drink of his blood what will happen to you ye have no life you are living physically but you are not a possessor of my life now to eat the flesh and to drink the blood is a mystery there is a prophetic act called communion a physical prophetic act but it's a language remember Hosea chapter 10 right Hosea chapter 12 I have spoken to you by the prophets I have used similitudes similitudes it's in the character of God to use similitudes what we call prophetic act a foreshadow an um, adumbration of something physical like he told Moses to leave the rod and that rod is Christ so it's in the character of God that's what I mean by the universality of his character is consistent both pre-old old New Testament post new <laughs> hallelujah 54 who so eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath zoe there is and I will raise him up at the last day 55 for my flesh is meat indeed now this sounds like occultism so you have to understand my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed 56 he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth aha he's now switching the parable for you to understand that he's not necessarily talking of physically eating he's talking about a condition of intimacy that can be likened to eating and drinking prophetically adumbrated by a physical activity to eat the blood the body and blood of Jesus is not just to eat things no it is a dimension of intimacy that begins by accepting and receiving him so he says dwelleth in me and I in him eating and drinking is an adumbration of a system that gets you into Christ and gets Christ into you last verse 
as the living father had sent me now listen and i live by the father do you know what that means that means i ate and drank of the father so i now live in the father that same system that made me to live by the father it says so that he eateth me shall also live by me listen are we you are intelligent now jesus is saying the father gave me his life and he called how he got that life eating and drinking and he said the same way i ate of the father's life that means i ate of his flesh i drank of his blood to have his life so also that means we must understudy how did jesus receive the way number one he was born of the spirit of the father understand this he was born of the spirit of the father number two he was empowered by the spirit of the father number three he walked in obedience to the spirit of the father these three conditions translated to him eating and drinking he released the reality of the fullness of the life of god everybody look at me communion is more than bread and wine if your experience at communion stops at just eating bread and drinking wine you are carrying out a religious activity that is powerless the eating and the drinking only becomes powerful on the strength of your understanding it is your understanding that releases the life are we together that means hallelujah every day of my life i can be eating the communion when i do the i eat the communion certain things happen many of them we are going to look at it the bible says that we testify and we declare of the lord's death how do we declare of his death we died with him we are alive that means my being alive is a testament that he is alive when you understand all of these facets of this communion then you will find out you can release the possibilities that come with it healing breakthrough an invocation of the mystery of mercy i can spend all night talking about the mercy of god the mercy of god is a mystery that starts with sinners but is needed in the kingdom otherwise we will not attain that height mercy is a mystery in god that vetoes judgment in your life it has nothing to do with whether the judgment is legitimate or not the moment your life is in a situation where on legal basis the devil should prevail over you what you need is the application of the mystery of his mercy are we together remember when david took a man's wife are we together now david was a man who loved god he took a man's wife killed the man and when he had a man's wife a particular prophet came his pastor came and gave a parable he started with a parable and gave a parable a parable that reflected that a man bullied a man and took something and david said who is that man and he said you are the man you are the man do you know what happened the bible says immediately david repented and sought for mercy and i think it was abner his prophet he said ah the lord has shown you mercy and you will not die meaning the price for that thing was death if david did not invoke the mercy like saul he would die too so david did not become an heir to the throne and then a predecessor of jesus because of perfection the difference between him and saul was mercy there was nothing Saul did that David did not do the difference was mercy mercy is only available in Christ mercy is a mystery that Satan cannot give mercy is a mystery that pastors they can pardon but they can't show mercy we interchange the words mercy is a mystery mercy is not to be excused mercy is that they pay for you so you enjoy the freedom but at the expense of someone else's there are few men who can show mercy they can pardon you 
but mercy does not take away the price it only exempts you hallelujah tenants of the christian faith unshakable foundations that will make a man remain in christ doctrine will rise and fall denomination will rise and fall technology will introduce sex and rise and fall but after many years you will still be standing let me tell you if you ever fall in your christian race it's not because satan prevailed over you it's because your foundation was shaky when you don't know what you believe that make up your conviction the day you meet with somebody who is an intelligent professor who studied scientology he will sit with you and use quantum physics to wash away your intelligence and make you look at jesus and say i never knew you were you were um buddha's mate it's just that you came ahead of him every religion acknowledges jesus but what you acknowledge him as makes the difference you acknowledge jesus christ as a carpenter's son it is true but you are still going to hell are we together now yes I believe in him and this is what i believe about him this is what the devil when he comes to your life he probes the dimensions of your convictions satan is not a fool he doesn't come to attack men when he came to jesus he started throwing questions the questions were testing how far and he found out ah every dimension there was a word basis that word did not come by mistake he went to the temple from age 12 he had been learning he had been building when satan comes to your life he will begin to throw issues around your life to find what dimension of spiritual reality has not become spirit and life to you that becomes his access point to your life satan cometh to me so he will come to everybody but he did not find meaning there is a possibility that he can find listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters you need to sustain an orientation in the spirit that defies every assault of darkness for instance the bible says while we look not at the things that are unseen but the things that are seen so if the devil wants to manipulate your senses to make you look like if you are truly in christ don't mind this stupid joshua selman and what he's saying if he's really in christ why is a and b and c happening the happening in your life does not change the fact that his life is in you Our eternal destinies are determined by the, whether or not we are possessors of that life. But the qualities of our lives on earth are dependent on the extent of our partnership through faith with the Holy Spirit in order to release those lives. So if I look at a man's life and his life demonstrates a dimension of spiritual possibility that is not in my life, aside from other factors like the election of grace and other things, it must mean therefore that there is a dimension of partnership he has sustained with the holy spirit that i've not been able to come into it that's why a family can have five people their father can be a pastor but the extent of their results will differ are we together now listen when jesus walked upon the earth he was very specific with his actions he intended for certain things to be understood about his work on earth that's why he had to reveal himself to paul to document these mysteries although the disciples saw him when he resurrected he still was with them 40 days and then left them 10 days in the upper room to receive the holy spirit but even in the midst of that he still had to anoint a man paul of tarsus saul who later became paul to be able to articulate the mysteries Paul calls it the fellowship of the mystery the fellowship of the mystery the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians 1 2 3 that we are alienated from the life of God through ignorance alienated from the life are we together now not experientially walking in the fullness of that life listen tonight as we prepare to receive the communion I want you to come to terms with certain things number one you must have the brokenness 
and the unashamedness to admit that if there is anything in your life that is yet to reflect the fullness of Christ, it is not because of a limitation posed by God. It is that there is a dimension of partnership with the Holy Spirit. Are we together? That has not yet begun or has not yet come to fruition for you to experience that dimension. You are only authorized to receive results if you can maintain that posture. That my life and your life today is not a reflection of who God is, but a reflection of how far we have chosen to walk with Him. It's an uncomfortable truth, but victory starts from that standpoint. Either He lied, or there's something wrong on our own part. Are we together? So if there are witches appearing every night, destroying your life, you sleep and somebody appears. Now listen, let me balance something. To deny the existence of that possibility is another dimension of foolishness. This is what sometimes we preachers do. We say it does not exist. No, it exists. You can only be exempted. You can't stop it. Satan still has authority over the systems. He's still the prince of the power of air. He's called a prince. The spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience. For a season he's still allowed. What happened is that God created a mystery that exempts you. Causes are real. They are still at work. Yokes are real. They are still at work. They will still attempt you. And until your knowledge bails you out. Knowledge of what? The systems of the kingdom. Bails you out. You will still be a victim of them. So when you come to me as a man of God. And say sir. Somebody came in the night and slept with me. I said that's nonsense. No. You are not being accurate. You may have ascended a level of understanding. That exempts you from that experience. But to deny the existence of that thing is a joke. What I can do is I can introduce to you what Christ gave to conquer it. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Lift your voice and sing unto him. Hallelujah. You have won You're seated in majesty, seated in majesty. You are the reason, King. You are the reason, King. Hallelujah. My life and my experiences are too small to limit everything God said about Zoe. If I live my life today dying of sickness, dying of failure, my life cannot be a model enough to say this is all that is contained in God. And I must have the unashamedness to admit that my limitations are not caused by the inability of God to produce that result. It's been encapsulated in the way. It should be a challenge for me that there is a dimension of understanding through the ministry of the word, the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of his body. We are members of his body, not just his spirit. We are part of the body. And the body as an entity holds possibilities. So I can love Jesus Christ, but I may not have been taught that part of his system is the introduction of apostles and prophets that can speak over your life. That can make me walk barren of the possibilities of God. But when I study through the word that there is a provision made like that, then I can align myself to that provision and now begin to walk in a new reality. Tonight is a night of brutal admittance. We have to come to a point where we admit that, listen, my father has not gotten a job for 20 years. My mother has not gotten a job for 20 years. It is not because God cannot release jobs. It is because there may be a dimension. Either they have refused to receive his life, partner with the spirit, understand his word, or discern his body. These are the causes. These are the things that are responsible for the limitations of people. 
So what we are doing tonight is not why you will be healed. What you are understanding now is why you will be healed. This understanding is what gives life to the wafers. The person who made the wine you are about to drink may be somewhere. You bought the wine. He was doing business. The person who made the wafers you are about to eat, he may even be an unbeliever. He just had that Christians eat this thing often. And he said, this is a stream of income and produced it. So you are eating somebody's value. You are not eating power. It is your understanding that translates that mystery. Like water turned to wine. Between the water and the wine was a word. When a word came, it turned the water to wine. It is that word, that understanding that will turn bread to his body. And the drink to his blood. Color does not matter. Whether the color is green or blue. It's only red to affect your psychology. Even if... This is what you take. It is your understanding. In the kingdom, power is released through understanding, not just motion. You tithe. It is not the money that brings the power. It is the understanding that gives life to the activity. That's why Jesus said, this is how you will build and the gates of hell will not prevail. Upon this rock, the rock is not Peter. The rock is a system. Upon this formula, you will build. Never speak outside of understanding so the system is that you first understand then you act when you act out of understanding you are building upon a rock when you act void of understanding you are building upon sand the sons of Skiva showed us a graphic example of that they spoke but there was no understanding and he said Jesus I know he built upon a rock Paul I know he built upon a rock but you are just speaking that means you come and eat because you heard that Bishop Oyedeko blessed communion and people took it and all of a sudden people were vomiting animals and then you take it and as soon as you take it as you are getting home the same spirit comes again because it's not the ritual the understanding is where the power lies so Paul I repeat Ephesians 1 for this cause it's not enough that you have received Zoe for this cause I have to go the extra mile to bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you that the Holy Spirit may reveal himself unto you as the spirit of wisdom and understanding so that you will know epignosis come into an understanding not awareness come into an experience where you and the information has become one when you understand this then you take that step and you find out that life is now released some of you because of this you will not even be able to hold the communion cup because you are now holding it now with understanding the demon that oppresses you has seen the light understanding gives life to the symbol remember the entrance of thy word give it light and understanding when that light comes that's what releases the power Ordinarily, you would have carried it and eaten and said, okay, can I take another one? You see why Paul rebuked the church in Corinth? They were not discerning the Lord's body. A time came when many of them started using the communion for alcoholism because they did not have a system of preserving this thing. So they looked forward to communion services. Communion will always remain. And then they didn't just take a little this thing. This is just for social reasons. And then to guide people financially but then you could have a big cup and fetch so there were people who would fetch and go and hide somewhere they didn't believe in Jesus and they would drink and Paul found out they were getting tipsy in the middle of an outpouring and Paul said no you people should come we need Bible study something is wrong you guys if you are hungry that's what Paul said if you are hungry do what go and eat in your house don't come to the Lord's house and violate his temple by eating he said for this cause this is it for not discerning for acting foolishly out of understanding many are weak many are sick many do sleep when was the last time you saw written in the grave of a man that he died because he didn't discern the Lord's body he said he died of cardiac failure for this cause so if I want to improve my life it's not all up to God Zoe is at work it's been available by grace but my partnership 
I must check the systems I'm ignoring. I am ignoring the life of God like some of you are doing, looking at me now. Not born again. When you see people talk about get born again, say forget about them, Jared. They are just hopeless people. After all, so, so, so sociology said religion is the opium of the masses. That guy may probably be in hell now. Be careful. Are we together now? Hmm. Don't, don't, don't listen to junks. You can write it and pass your exams. But when it comes to your eternal destiny, you must be serious. You have rejected his life or you have rejected the ministry of his spirit. You have rejected the ministry of his word. You have rejected the ministry of his body. These are the provisions made. I want to ask you a question tonight. Which one have you rejected? You can easily know it by looking at your life. You have insulted every man of God you know by saying, look, forget it. I insult every man of God. We can all go to Christ. You have accepted Christ. You may have accepted his word, but you have rejected his body. There is a consequence, a bitter one. They are taken for a prey and none say it, restore. The Bible tells us that there is a system with which God built his ecclesia, the church. He said Christ is the chief cornerstone immediately you meet Christ he introduced two ministries called the apostles and the prophets they are the foundations of the church if you do not meet them your building cannot grow the cornerstone is there you ignore them you build nonsense it's a system it's an election of grace which one have you ignored some of you have ignored have supposedly admitted the ministry of the Holy Spirit you like power you don't doubt even if somebody jumps up and hangs in the air you like it but you have ignored the ministry of the word thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path that illumination that comes through his word you have pay attention to what I'm teaching tonight you have ignored that boundary of revelation and you will find out that there will be a lot of charismatism around your life and you will know which one is witchcraft and which one is of God because there is no compass there is no the word of God is like a buffer solution it defines the dimensions of the operations of the Holy Spirit so when you are going out of it the word of God guides you and says no every manifestation must be consistent with the character of God there are people who have embraced supposedly the ministry of the word the Bible calls them men who have come around the baptism of John and ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Acts 19. Remember, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Verse 1. And verse 2, they says, We have not even heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And Paul was surprised. They were believers, disciples, going through Bible study. He said, Unto what then were you baptized? They said, The baptism of John. And Paul said, No. The baptism of John was a baptism of repentance to the end that they should believe on he that should come, even Jesus Christ. And when they had it, the Bible says they were baptized in the name of the Lord. And Paul laying his hands on them, they now received the ministry of the Spirit of God. Right? They prayed in tongues and prophesied. The Bible says there were about 12 of them. Acts chapter 19, 1 to 5. Thank you very much. So it is possible to believe the Bible just because you inherited it from your pastor. But not walk with the Spirit. Jesus died. To make all these systems available his life in us exclusively given through the office of the Christ but released by the interaction of that believer with the Spirit of God the Word of God the body we teach a lot about the Word of God we teach a lot about the Spirit of God but we ignore his body Christ is the head he's not a head moving around that head has a body and he acknowledges that the body is part of himself and then in another mystery he calls that body his wife you don't ignore a man's wife and, and then he will laugh with you the Bible said jealousy is the rage of a man so as you insult his wife simply because the wife is wounded are we together if a Jimmy's wife has an injury and you say because of that she's no longer a woman and Jimmy will stand close to her first before he will give you a slap you say by this little act let it prove to you that when I said I do I meant it I also said I mean it so the man of God may not be perfect 
but he's still part of the system when you criticize him you are criticizing somebody's wife and that man will react are you hearing what i'm saying for this cause i've taught it here go and get the teaching on the body of christ i told you the mystery of receiving from the body of christ was adumbrated in the parable of samson samson went to the philistines and he gave them a riddle he said out of something weak came something strong and they could not decipher the parable he killed a lion and then bees did not know where to go and put honey they went to a carcass and put honey there meaning if you must enjoy the honey you can endure the smell so you come to a man of god who is temperous but look beyond the temper there is an anointing there is always honey in the midst of the carcass this is the mystery of discerning the body you have to ignore the limitations that are in people so if the pastor does not look like you you may see him a yopi person and babs as if he's, he's some of these touts around these these vegas guys he may be that may not be the best but the truth of the matter is that he may be anointed the woman may dress and she may be careless you know like i was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday and i told them i went for a program and there was a woman of god who was introducing something and kai i'm not somebody who talks about dressing but mm -mm, even till today it's too much it's, it's not it's not she didn't leave anything to the imagination very bad for a congregation very bad for a congregation i say it again very bad for a congregation anyway it happened but the fact remains that the woman was very anointed can you endure the smell because the honey is there it's a mystery how the bees endure the smell to pitch it there there is this treasure let me give you the new testament translation that treasure is hidden in the bible didn't say in vessels in earthen vessels so you may not like me as a person but why don't you look beyond the limitation and see that there is a treasure that's why there is no church that cannot bless me if you search for jesus you will find him i've ministered in all kinds of places i remember when we were coming back from ekiti when we met some of the the the, the men of god that prayed for us pastor jakes they could not speak yoruba that's enough to annoy me say what is all this i'm the one who needs the miracle i need long life that baba cannot speak english but is walking in an experience of a reality what do you think we did we look for an interpreter there has to be an interpreter we found an interpreter who came and the man said we should kneel down now i have received jesus christ i am walking in partnership with his spirit i have received of the word but i discerned his body i would have said i'm a man of god i i was going for a crusade it was a powerful crusade mighty miracles and on the way we stopped and the man didn't even say you are pastors say kneel down first. really that's what he said and in yoruba he was just praying i didn't hear one thing he said but all i know is that that man was long he was living long enough for me to cover that grace which part of god's systems have you ignored please hear this message tonight is the answer to the prayer that demon that has oppressed you you have quoted scripture that's very good it's true that you are working with the holy spirit but your knowledge is limited but there is still out of his benevolence he has kept an anointing with a vessel one word go will set you free of 10 years of limitations but we will refuse and say look i know jesus christ by myself so you limit god's possibilities to only the revelation that the holy spirit and the word is permitted through your willingness and sometimes your lifetime may not afford you the dimension of revelation it takes for the result you need so you must tap into every channel that's what he meant when he told nicodemus you must be born of the water and the spirit otherwise you cannot enter you can see it but you will not enter seeing the kingdom is that it has come to you but entering it is becoming a testament of the reality so you can now say since i was young now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken no 
that thing was not a poem to be recited by everyone it was a man's testimony based on a dimension of possibility you have to make it yours before you speak otherwise you will keep mocking yourself this is what these unguided confessions that are not out of understanding will keep mocking us if ye are abraham's children you will do the works of abraham what was his work he believed god god told him something god said abraham i want to introduce a dimension to you i have not done to anybody and abraham believed god tonight is easter all over the world there are cathedrals there are ministries there are crusades packed full with the over two billion christians on earth attempting men of god there are tapes rolling all over churches right now every man of god attempting sincerely to reveal something that the people can take back about easter i brought to you a reality the bible says this is the record it was documented god has given us eternal life but this life is in his son and whosoever has the son has that life but grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge according as his divine power half not will half is a fact giving us giving us giving us every limitation in my life and your life is a revelation of something about the systems of god we have ignored or are still learning and have not come into that fullness when you know that you put an urgency to your pursuit for god for the more i know you the more i want to know you jesus more of you for the more i see your face the more i want to see jesus shortly we are going to take the communion please those relevant people let's station them there are three mysteries that the lord revealed to me that will be open to us tonight as we partake of the communion three number one the communion tonight is an encounter with the spirit of revelation we need revelation in our lives we need revelations in our lives brothers and sisters please hear me we need revelation in our lives the limitation of my life and your life is not dependent on satan is dependent on how far i can access the dimensions of the possibilities that the life of god can provide based on the knowledge that i have his life only gives you potentials your partnership accurate partnership makes it an experience tonight as you partake of this let something boil in you that all men are equal in christ but they are not equal in possibilities our possibilities are determined by the truths we have chosen to receive and the dimensions of the systems of the kingdom we have comprehended and so we must press hear what paul says he says this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind i press there is something i need to know about death to stop being afraid of it there is something i need to know about poverty there is something i need to know about restoration there is something i need to know about fruitfulness the love of god is revealed when we study his systems the bible says the invisible things of god right the invisible things are seen they are learned they are taught by the things that appear so i look at and say what what kind of a man is this that grants me access to his life sends his spirit to me causes men moved by the same spirit to document more information the apostles did not have a bible all they had was the torah right the pentateuch the five books of moses but now god has gone the extra mile for our generation because he knows evil and wickedness will increase and he has left a document to still help us and then in addition to that he has empowered men and women in the body
so that we are not without excuse and what a joy the Lord has spoken to us this year that is our year of triumph that means we can walk with these systems of the kingdom and rise when I was studying I was just studying the passion of the Christ tonight and I was so touched looking at everything Jesus went through just for me just for me Jesus came and did it just for me just for me just for me Jesus came and did it just for me that's what he did tonight well the cross will always represent the love God had for me when the Lord of glory heaven sent gave all on Calvary just for me he just for me Jesus came and did just for me so what is the implication of tonight I remember I remember his sacrifice while he was on the way to Golgotha the Bible says that there were certain things in the mind of God and Paul was given access to those things they were encapsulated in a document and Paul calls it a testament and then Hebrews chapter 9 Paul is speaking pastor Alpha ready there Jesus knew that those things would be activated only at his death so they were prepared and when he died there was still ignorance and he started moving through holy men to document these things to say now you have access I have died for every will is not yet activated until the death of the testator Jesus died if he did not die eternal life will not be a reality he hung on that cross between two thieves a 33 and a half year old man naked there was no covering no he was naked and he looked at the world that he came to die for and the people yelled crucify him let his blood be on our children they were prophesying something that would really happen because his blood had to be on their children for them to be saved what was a statement of war was a prophecy let his blood be upon our children they didn't know that was why he was on the cross they mocked him let me tell you something Jesus did not go to the cross as Jesus he went to the cross as me and you when he stood there he saw me he saw Joshua Selman he saw Koinonia remember Acts chapter 2 they were caught in their heart and they said men and brethren what do we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive that promise for the promise is unto you and unto your children and to your children's children he says as many as are afar of which the Lord will call this is where we came in in Acts chapter 10 reading from verse 38 down to 44 the Bible says the moment the Holy Ghost fell on all they that had him day of the circumcision the Jews said ah I perceive truly we now see that God is no respecter of persons but that in every nation whoever calls upon his name will be saved tonight we are taking the communion number one access to the spirit of revelation according to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 I bow my knees and I pray for you O church of the Lord Jesus Christ that I desire you to release the reality of Zoe that life that is indestructible that life that is far above principalities and powers the life that is capable of demonstrating dominion here and now the life that is characterized by victory the life of meaning the life of fulfillment the life of purpose but it's access through knowledge the spirit of revelation number two the second thing that the communion will release to us tonight 
is reenacting that covenant of life through that prophetic act that we are going to be doing the bible says he that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath my life do you know what that means there are many things at work in your life now that were not sponsored by that eternal life watch this my body as designed by god is supposed to grow through a system there should be a symmetry and a synergy correct if a boil starts coming out from here that boil is growing not at the same pace with my body now biologically they can say something is responsible but spiritually we know that another life is responsible so the result of that another life i see it different from my body so what you do is by the mystery of the communion you are taking it to your physical body physical flesh and blood it's a mystery that reminds the devil that every part of you was handed over to Christ that means whatever is not a derivative of the life of God put it scripturally every tree that was not planted by my father meaning there are other farmers are we together there are other what farmers for instance while men slept an enemy he's a farmer the Bible says he came and sowed he's a farmer and left whether that sleep is a spiritual sleep psychological sleep as a result of the weight of the vicissitudes of life fatigue several things happening in your life and you did not know and it weighed you down or as a result of real physical sleep the activities of darkness listen as you take this i want you to discern the lord's body don't just to discern the lost body is not to eat slowly to discern the lost body is to take it with understanding it's not that you close your eyes you take it slowly no 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 that is religion to discern the lord's body is that as you are taking this truly speaking this is wafers this is wine but the, my understanding authorizes the holy spirit to form an eclipse between that that activity that dinner thing and me and as i lift it is the same thing as the servants who were carrying water while they lifted it the distance between his word and your mouth causes a miracle to happen this is what will make somebody hold it and just the distance from the table to your mouth you can't stand it an anointing responding to your understanding that's why somebody can take the communion and all of a sudden you feel you just took something small that before it got to your stomach a lot of itself was hanging around different parts of your body but all of a sudden you take it and you are already feeling fire on your leg did that thing get to your leg it's a mystery you only gave him space tonight can your communion be a body that you have prepared for him we have prepared a body remember a body has thou prepared without a body he cannot move so the communion just like the human body can become the body tonight that communion can be the hand that heals you tonight that communion can be the mystery that destroys the devourer for your non tithing and God can say I give you a clean slate start again tonight that communion can be a reversal of several things if you take it with understanding are we together so we are going to pray but before we pray overflow one overflow two by the road those online from any nation and any place you are listening to the first key is to receive the life of God's way the life of God is not Christianity Christianity was a description given to possessors of that life God is not initiating you into a religion he says come on to me listen there are people seated here looking at me inside and outside you are tired and you're saying apostle as I stand right now sincerely I don't even know what my life is about I have tried like the worship team sang I've done everything but tonight I am in all humility lifting my heart and my hands and saying I need that life my father refused to receive the life 
My mother refused to receive the life. My brothers and sisters refused to receive the life. I choose to receive that life. And there are yet others who may say, at one point, I came for an altar call. But sincerely, I don't know the name of what I did. I only know that they said congratulations and they gave me hamper. I ate what was inside but nothing entered me. And this night, I want to eat of my, the bread. He said, my bread is, my body is meat indeed. For in the sanctuary, God, Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried. For in the sanctuary, God is Wherever you are, just wait till I start counting before you come. I'm going to count one to five because of time. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, as I sat listening to you, I knew that I had to be sincere with myself. And I knew that I have to win this war. My life does not reflect Zoe in any way. Number one, I have not even received it. Every time I hear preachers talk like Saul of Tarsus, I mock them and I say they are wasting my time. But tonight, I want to win that war. And number two, there are others who said, well, I know that I came and confessed something. For a while, I was even walking with God. But sincerely, I know between me and God right now that I'm not serious with Him. And I don't want any pretense again. Wherever you are, the Holy Spirit is already speaking to you. Overflow one, two, wherever you are. I want you to make your way here. I would have asked you to go to the overflow outside, but there is a reason why I want all of you here. So as I count one to five, there are people there. I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain. Leave your seat and come out here right now. If you are ashamed of your friend, you are ashamed of your brother, you are ashamed of your sister, then you are wasting the mystery of Easter. Start coming. One, God bless you. Leave your seat and come. Don't be ashamed. Clap for them, Koinonia. Appreciate them as they come. God bless you. Keep coming. That flows from help me see Emmanuel's faith. Keep coming. Lose all their guilty strength. The third mystery that you will receive tonight from the communion is an empowerment for a strange order of dominion please don't forget these three things don't forget these three things number one access to the spirit of revelation number two an exit of everything that was not planted by God there will be mighty mighty miracles and deliverances as you take this Number three, an empowerment for a strange order of dominion. The centurion said, for I am a man under authority. I say unto one, go and he goeth. I say unto another, come and he cometh. Speak the word only. The Bible says, where the word of a king is, there is power. That as you partake of this communion, something will come upon you. The Bible says that when you take it, right first corinthians 11 when you take it that you announce you declare the lord's death the meaning of that is that you tell principalities and powers that the person you used to know is not the person now jesus died and i died in him and now the life that i live i live by the faith of the son of god another system so way god's life now this is what we are going to do I'm going to give you two prayer points we are going to pray seriously and um, everyone outside you don't have to come there are the first overflow at the projector there is a provision like this 
the second overflow at the projector there is a provision like this and then in here we did it because of time now this is all you are going to do those here you would come this way just take the cup and the bread drop the cup there and match this way those here you will do the same thing and then i think there'll be a provision here at the minister stand so that we don't have chaotic things please some of you will fall under the anointing as you do it just be careful and let's just coordinate them i want to pray and bless this now and then we are going to pray the moment you partake of it you go back and find a corner and begin to blast in tongues and pray these three things in your life that's happy stuff for you you have to pray it with all your heart and say lord i understand this mystery let my understanding permit the life of god to find expression prayer point number one lord i believe i believe but in case i do not believe help my own belief lift your voice and pray whatever is not of faith is sin lift your voice and pray pray inside and outside pray inside and outside Are you praying? Help my own belief. Emmanuel. 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 Your name is called Emmanuel. Your name is called Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. point number two Lord as I partake of this let the mystery of the communion be enacted in me whatever this represents I permit it to work in me lift your voice and pray seriously inside outside those online get bread and get wine or water get something that represents the communion hallelujah hallelujah please listen i want to pray for the communion first corinthians 11 from verse 23 the apostle is speaking and he says for i have received of the lord that which i also delivered unto you that the lord jesus listen that same night which was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me 25 after the same manner he also took the cup listen are you seeing the order so you take the bread then you take the cup he took bread and said eat then he took the cup and he says this is my blood of the new testament do this as often and then he says 26 for as often as he eats this bread and drink this cup ye do show the lord's death till he comes now he says for this cause verse 30 many are weak for not partaking of this with understanding many are weak many are sick and many among you sleep meaning if i partake of it with understanding 
among other things it should destroy weakness it should destroy sickness and it should destroy death that's the next prayer point lord weakness sickness and the plague of death any kind of death it lives my life now lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray victory victory over sickness weakness death hallelujah hallelujah now please agree with me i want to pray i tell you i sense such a strong anointing in this place i'm praying here at the projector stand everywhere those online regardless of any nation just go and get something water wafers food whatever is just a token who can stand against the lord no one can no one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one will. Oh. the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ father tonight I stretch my hands prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ upon this communion this is ordinary wine and wafers but Lord, we command it to lose its earthly significance now and take on a heavenly significance. And Lord, I pray, using this as a point of contact to every other communion set around the world connected to us now, I decree and declare that this becomes a type and a shadow, a similitude of the body of Jesus a similitude of the bread the blood of Jesus Christ and Lord I pray that as we partake tonight we access the spirit of revelation as we partake tonight every stranger in our life must go immediately and Lord as we partake tonight fresh fire for dominion and trial in the name of Jesus Therefore, Lord, we declare this blessed. We call it blessed right now. I put the word of God upon it. And I declare that it will produce miracles. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please start coming. Start coming quickly. Worship him. Help us. Let's just have some people come and stand. Open it up. And then... Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus.
other name like Jesus There is no other name No, no, no There is no other name like Jesus There is no other name No, no, no There is no other name like Jesus Please, There quickly, is no quickly, other quickly, name quickly. No, 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 no There is no other name Jesus There is no other name No, no, no There is no other name there is no other name. No, no, no. There is no other name. Other name. There is no other name. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. There is no other name. Like Jesus. There is no other name. No, 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 no. no. Say it. Like Jesus. There is no other name. No, 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 no. Hold on. Please, what, what is wrong here? Why are there no people coming? Please quickly if you are coming, ushers coordinate them, protocol coordinate them, please. There's a lot to do. If you are coming, double up, please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's save time. There is no other name like Jesus. There is no other name. No, no, no. There is no other name like Jesus. Are you praying? There is no other name. Are you no, no, the no, there is no other name like Jesus. There is no other name. No, no, there is no other name like Jesus. There is no other name. No, 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 there is no other name like Jesus. There is no other name. No, 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 there is no other name. You are the only living God. Yes, Lord. You are the only living God. I say you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. Say. You are the only God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. I say you are the only God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. Hey. I say you are the only. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. Hey, I say you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. I say you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. I say you are the only living God. Yes, you are. You are the only living God. We praise you. 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 We love 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 you. living God yes you are you are the only living God hey you are the only living God yes you are you are the only living God you are the only living God yes you are you are the only living God I say you are the only living God yes you are you are the Only living God, yes, you are. You are the only living God. I say, You are the only living God, yes, you are. You are the only living God. We praise it, 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 we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. 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 I 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 love you.
The Lord, let your name be glorified. Hey, you are the Lord, let your name be glorified. You are the Lord, oh, you are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord, let your name be glorified. I say, You are the Lord, let your name. Be
you know be mine. Now you be God, oh. Now you be God, Almighty God, Almighty God. You know be mine, oh. 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 Now regale, now regale, now Lift your hand, something is happening to you. Something serious is happening in your spirit. Lift your hands. You reign, you ancient Zion is king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and we, you are mighty on your throne. Hallelujah! Right now, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I command a baptism. You have taken something in your body of the spirit of revelation. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. That fire upon you. Illumination. By the mystery of communion. Step into a new dimension of light, of illumination. I command your spirit man to comprehend with all the sense, the length, the breadth, the height, the depth. I call your spirit man, rise higher, a higher dimension, a higher dimension, a higher dimension. Mantles are falling here tonight. Mantles are falling here tonight. All the kinds are rising from the gates of the church. The boras are rising from the gates of the church. For the kings to be born, for revival to be born, for revival to be born. For the kings to be born, hey, Ali, Ali, oh, Ali, oh, Ali, oh, Ali, Ali, oh, oh, Ali, Ali. Now listen to me. Any stranger in anyone's body now, whether by covenant, whether by sickness, right now as I speak, let the mystery of the communion speak now. I command judgment, every sickness, blood disease, covenants, right now, every tree not planted, help that lady, by my father. Let it go now. Let it go now. Terminal diseases, yokes of delay, limitations. I command it to give way right now. Ah, 
I tell you, there is a strong impartation in this place. I want to activate upon you a grace. Listen, the Bible says, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. Rule thou that they may come against you in one way, but that an unction from the Most High can be upon you and scatters them a thousand ways. The Lord has declared that it's a year of triumph. You are about to receive something that will make you run like Elijah. I pray for you. The mantle of strange dominion. Strange dominion over principalities, over circumstances. Take it now. Take it now. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. Take it now. I release that mantle. I release that grace. No limitations. No limitations. Breakthrough. Dominion. Breakthrough. In business. Breakthrough. In career. Breakthrough. In academics. I command it by the spirit of dominion. Hear me. Anyone here who is a man of God, you are in any kind of ministry, may an unction for kingdom authority let it come upon you right now. Take it now. Take it now. Grace. Kingdom authority. Take it now. Dominion. Let that fire rest on your ministry. Let that fire rest on your church. Let that fire rest on your assembly. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that everything Jesus died for and is not yet manifest in your life from tonight I give the devil no rest may your eyes begin to see the salvation of the Lord may your eyes begin to see the salvation of our God I pray for every family represented here and I prophesy enough is enough of every demonic assault therefore tonight by this communion I release judgment I release vengeance I release judgment I release vengeance I release judgment I release vengeance Whoever has partnered with darkness to keep your family bound this night as Jesus died in exchange may the earth open and swallow them. May the earth open and swallow them. The kind of results that your hands have not handled I pray for you that in the next 30 days as surely as the Lord lives by the mystery of the death of this Savior of us step into that dimension of results step into that dimension of results hallelujah buried with him in baptism we died with him and when we resurrected, we resurrected to a new life. Whatever makes the reality of eternal life to not speak in your life, I decree and declare right now that that barrier is broken forever. Finally, I pray for you. The anointing to bring others to this experience, the unction to walk in the reality of the life of Christ, 
to walk in healing to speak breakthroughs to people i stretch my hands upon you like the dew of heaven let it fall on you right now let it fall on you right now let it fall on you right now right now is yours take it let it fall on you right now like the dew of heaven the unction to demonstrate the kingdom the unction to demonstrate the kingdom i release it for you right now whether you are standing whether you are at the window whether you are everywhere following online just go ahead and connect don't allow the little inconveniences to distract you it's a very serious prayer everyone that asketh receiveth lord increase my greatness increase my greatness comfort me increase my greatness for the sake of my family members increase my greatness for the sake of the gospel increase my greatness for the sake of the ministry the church you have committed increase my greatness for the sake of the lost souls millions billions of them increase my greatness for the sake of having your purposes preserved within a territory hallelujah praise the lord are we blessed let me just talk about one key there are many but for tonight just to add to what i've shared just one key that can help us grow in greatness greatness is a system remember that the kingdom of god operates on mysteries and systems say after me mysteries say after me systems the kingdom of god is systemic god never does the same thing twice when he does a thing once he creates a system around it for continuity are we together he never created the plants and the animals twice he did it once and put a seed in it for reproduction he made one man one woman never to make another one again are we together there is a system so if your life is to excel it must be built on systems if your life is built on miracles as much as you are going to receive them miracles are a sign that something went wrong and the sovereignty of god is intervening to correct we were never designed to live off miracles listen very carefully if you live off miracles you will live a frustrated life we live off principles we live off the systems of the kingdom the systems of god create predictability they are an attestation to his justice the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne never mistake a miracle to mean that's how god wants it to continue a miracle is a stepping in of god to correct something that shouldn't be you are working properly when your life is systemic are we together first corinthians chapter 4 please give us verse 1 and verse 2 let's talk about just one key here faithfulness say after me faithfulness second corinthians chapter 4 it says let a man so account of us as of the ministers of christ paul is speaking now and stewards paul uses a very interesting language not not owners he calls them stewards the word steward is the word caretaker caretakers of the mysteries of god number two it says moreover it is required in stewards if it is true that you are a steward there is a requirement and it says moreover it is required in stewards that a man whoever says he is a steward must exhibit a character called faithfulness faithfulness it says must be found faithful there are many people who may never rise beyond their current levels of influence their current financial level their levels of the anointing of revelation because they have other things but they lack this quality faithfulness in the kingdom you grow it looks simple but write it in the kingdom you grow and jesus grew in wisdom jesus grew in stature jesus grew in favor with god and with men 
we live in a time where we admire people's results every time we see uncommon results whether in the area of the anointing the demonstration of the spirit revelations influence etc every time we see that people are stepping into unusual levels of grace we don't admire the process we rather admire the results hallelujah i see people come to me and i know they are well-meaning and they just kneel down and say sir double portion of your anointing and i said look, look at what this guy is asking are we together it looks like a very that's why some of you came here probably to get a double portion the mother of james and john came to jesus and said jesus i have a request on behalf of my two sons you've been seeing them you've, you've you see how faithful they have been in your ministry would you grant because the way you are going you are going to overthrow caesar would you grant that when all is said and done let my kids sit at your left and right and jesus looked at her he never said it's an impossible request he said can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism two things one works internally the other one works externally but both must happen to qualify you the seat is vacant but can you drink this one is not a gift it's a reward are we together now one of the requirements is faithfulness there are pastors who will never rise beyond certain membership barrier because they are not faithful god gives you three members you look at them and feel they are not relevant at all are we together oh these members are not serious you are three all of you are broke none of you is smart none of you is walking i'm the one who pays your transport what kind of useless membership is this and god is watching and then you admire another church with choice uh what do we call it choice membership this one is working in oil company i said these, these are the kind of members and we we have the effrontery to go back to the secret place and cry that god will find a way of drawing those people from that church to bring it to our church and god says look at this the kind of believers that are being produced within this region no understanding it is required in stewards in men of god in business people in young people in students in whatever dimension of life that you be faithful listen very carefully be faithful be faithful never follow a man who does not have a track record of growth you are only wasting your time no matter how flamboyant the results are is a mirage anybody who stumbles into financial prosperity is joking is joking i repeat is joking anybody who just stumbles into the anointing is still joking anybody who stumbles into revelation is joking there must be a track record in life your track record is what gives value to your current stature faithfulness here's what jesus has to say about this luke chapter 16 please give us verse 10 to 12 jesus is teaching here luke chapter 16 10 to 12 it says he that is faithful listen now jesus is teaching here it was the the parable of of the unjust servant whose master was about to banish him and he went to reduce the bills for several people so that when he was banished he would now rush to them and jesus is using the opportunity to teach us something here that he that is faithful in that which is least is what he didn't say will be is already i can know whether you qualify for your next level in life by what you are doing with the current level is faithful also in much and he that is unjust please go back to verse 10 he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much next verse 11 if therefore ye have not been faithful he's speaking in the context of resources now in unrighteous mammon your naira and cobble he says who will commit to you the true riches you know what the true riches are things that money cannot buy but can buy money true riches money itself is a commodity there is something that buys it 
two riches. Are you getting what I'm saying now? In our world today, if you have money, you can buy everything. But God is saying that money itself, like you sell phones, money is a product too. There is something that can buy it. It's called two riches. So when God tests you, let me tell you what this is saying. Let me use, um, let me bring out a thousand naira. Look at this. This is one thousand naira. Do you know God can arrange favor? Come, Pastor Femi. I can see him already warming up to be a very, can, I mean, look at the, see how sharp he's looking. Praise the Lord. Now, watch this. Do you know that in your walk with God, a time can come, God can just open a door for you. 100,000 comes. You are not rich. This is unrighteous mammon. He's testing you. You are rich when he gives you what can buy this. You are not rich if you have this. This, this is nonsense. Anything can happen. Set this on fire. You can't pack the ashes to court and say this was 1,000. True riches is what can buy this product. Not shoe. Buy this. This one. So he's watching you and he gives you this and you are not faithful in it you misuse it you waste it the kingdom does not benefit from it he says no there is an anointing i can give you that will bring this you have not qualified i tested you with this and you failed are we together god can bring a relationship come god can bring a relationship to your life that you know you didn't even qualify for it is a test you misuse that relationship you take advantage of the people and you don't even max you don't value them and then all of a sudden you cannot be given the true riches that can buy greater relationships faithfulness is a powerful spiritual quality powerful spiritual quality many people are not faithful that's why they pray they fast oh god dry fast seven days 40 days lord give me more anointing give me this give me that and then one day god leads you to one old woman and god says take care of this woman your destiny is to walk in the healing ministry but he won't start by giving you the healing anointing he will start by creating compassion in you take care of this old woman and you say oh god this old woman how much will i get from this woman I need something that I will shine so that from that shining to be on YouTube and then it will be on all the social media platforms and up I go and God says you see that there's no faithfulness and while that is happening God is watching one young lady somewhere taking care of the woman mama are you okay and she's she's writing her promotion exams through faithfulness she may not know but she's walking herself to a realm of the anointing one day she'll finish taking care of that woman and say father thank you for the privilege my mother was never alive for me to be able to take care of her but thank you for giving me such an old woman and the heavens are open over that young lady a strange anointing comes upon her two years later that lady is walking in a dimension of the healing anointing that nobody can explain and people criticize where did this girl come from from nowhere i've told you there's nobody that comes out from nowhere that you are not aware of the training does not mean they were not trained there is nobody that comes out of nowhere it's a lie when you are in the cave of adulam it's a lonely place when you manifest people say ah this person is lucky no there's no luck in this thing is god speaking to us many of us god trusted us with finances we were not faithful many of us today if i tell you lift your prayer request now you will see prayer point one breakthrough prayer point two financial rest prayer point three financial favor it's still the same thing you are writing just different versions so that however god wants to answer it it should just answer it are we together lord increase in membership did you know while i was praying i was already set to come the rain started all i was doing i i found tears coming out of my eyes because i was thinking 
I said, my God, my God, these, these people now, how, how, how do we manage these people? But many of you, ah, they've come, let them come. You know, you are the superstar. When you think like that, you will never rise. Don't forget that men may not know why you are looking at this. But there is a God who has the all-seeing eye that looks at you and knows that this man of God should not rise. Are we together? Many of us want resources. As I've lifted this 1,000 now, many of you have been looking at it. You are not even hearing me again. Listen. You are not faithful. If you are faithful, it's proof that you are a steward. Can God give you this and say, let me have it back? And you say, Lord, it's yours. It's proof of faithfulness. Lord, after all, it came from you. I, I, you took me from nowhere soaking Gary if you have given me this if you make a demand it goes there are many of you once your hands hold it it's only a need a secular need that will release it the voice of God has no right to make you release this and then you want lots of it and we keep joking that we are having dreams and seeing God is not stupid this system is very orderly once your heart is not with God you won't find anything are we together I've shared this story here once upon a time in this area then nobody knew me nobody I was invited to go and minister somewhere and just like it rained very heavily tonight I had prepared fasted prepared to go there and then the rain started and the people were expecting me and that time there was no protocol to come put umbrella etc all of these formalities that was how i i rolled my sleeves rolled my trouser and held my bible i started praying in tongues in the rain lord don't mind me being soaked just bless your people if your people are blessed i am satisfied are we together now I remember going there and then to make matters worse the church didn't even make arrangement for umbrella to receive me it was then Steve strings who saw me from outside and collected he was also invited he collected an umbrella to run go and receive me outside when I came in they asked me to wait they had to shift some people in front to create space for me to come and sit down it looked painful it looked ego stinging but it was a test of faithfulness can you be faithful even when your reputation is being insulted not everybody will insult your reputation keep forbearing with those who don't value you then you will qualify for those who can value you there are some of you today you will go to minister somewhere they will disrespect you some of you are intelligent business people surrounded by those who have no value keep at what you are doing you will come to a point where God will bring you to people who can recognize the grace you carry and my goodness happy are you when you enter that season in your life where you are surrounded by those who have a recognition of what you carry and will be willing to bless my life was not always like this this ministry was not always like this the first crusade you see crowds everywhere and we're happy many of you who follow me on Facebook or follow follow the ministry uh, on Facebook and follow what we are doing and you know all the crowds and the things that happen when every time I travel many people just see it and think it's just because he's anointed it's not just because I'm anointed with all humility what you are seeing is a product of many years of faithfulness I've shared with you our first crusade it never you see the secrets of men are in their stories don't just hear the story discern the message are we together I told you about our first crusade I think we're about 20 or so the entire crusade ground I'm not sure we're up to 50 the first crusade we prayed fasted organized when it was time to pray for the sick the whole team had the opportunity one-on-one -on -one. it was a test of faithfulness many of us do not want to start small as a student you want to wear the same cloth with a bank manager and so you open your gate wide for a devourer to come and rubbish your life and keep punishing you.
are we together there are men of god who start in ministry everybody they see is their colleague take it easy move gradually no i'm anointed if not because of condition don't i have a better revelation than kenny and god keeps you there say stay there i just caught a new revelation there's nobody to hear you because there is no track record you can look at a pastor who doesn't seem to have any serious revelation and wonder why god keeps him there faithfulness all he may say is god bless you god lift you god anoint you and then you are there in your pride and arrogance i just finished pieces in the book of ephesians and you will remain there for many years is god speaking to us never be ashamed of the track record of faithfulness lord this is the level of grace that you have given me i am happy i am proud of it lord you have given me the anointing to clean chairs i know that you have called me to be an apostle to the nations but in this season my assignment is to clean chairs i receive the grace to do it faithfully not just to clean chairs and say kai oh god if not just people me cleaning chairs and god says that's it you see that and you'll never rise everybody say faithfulness say it again faithfulness matthew chapter 25 we're going to read three verses 21 23 and 29 thank you matthew 25 we're reading 21 23 and we're reading 29 i just want to show you something and then we'll begin to pray this was the parable of the talents five two and one talent and this to the one who had five his lord said unto him after being faithful he said well done good and what faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things let me show you how greatness happens in the kingdom thou hast been faithful over a few things what's your reward i will make thee ruler over many things when you are promoted in the kingdom many things happen to you one the anointing upon your life is multiplied number two your operation becomes easy number three god expands your self-influence to cause more people to hear your voice is a product of faithfulness you have been faithful over a few things i gave you a teaching anointing and i did not give you an anointing for miracles and you were not ashamed to teach the people as best as you knew to every time they ask you man of god why is it that we don't see miracles in your life be patient i'm coming i'm not ashamed to say god is bringing me there for now is the teaching grace he has given me i will teach i will make bible study notes and god is saying this is a man who will not only be a good shepherd he will be a good manager of my anointing and one day that man comes to a meeting and all of a sudden an impartation comes upon him the dimension that has been absent is now supplied by the spirit he goes back not just as a teacher but as a worker of miracles 23 to the man with the two talents he said his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant same thing thou has been faithful over a few things so it's not the size of what you were given the same commendation i will make thee ruler over many things let's go to 29 29 for unto everyone that hath this is a mystery in the kingdom that when you have is a sign that you were a good manager and the reward is that he shall have what abundance of anything abundance here doesn't just talk of finance abundance of the anointing abundance of influence abundance of access to revelations and then it says but from him that hath and is not faithful now he says even that which he had shall be taken away it is not only satan that takes things away god too takes things away are we together now not every reduction is caused by demons there are reductions that are a testimony it's a report card from god to you that something is wrong with your stewardship 
when God increases you members rise today and mysteriously members just go down sometimes it could be that it's a message from God that I trusted you with 30 people and I observed your stewardship your stewardship does not merit multiplication you rise in finances and then sometimes you just go down never to rise again it could be a message that you need to upgrade on your stewardship you rise in influence and all of a sudden you find out within a season all your helpers are no longer there all the people whose voice who who listen to your voice and acknowledge your voice are no longer there it could be a sign that you are abusing the privilege of stewardship are we together the prayer that you need to pray in this season is for God to help you that whilst you are waiting for a supply of greater dimensions of his grace but that he grants you the fortitude to be faithful if God gives you 10 naira be faithful if God gives you one shoe polish it don't sit down running your eyes on every shoe and say don't worry except God is not my God I'm coming and and that shoe will say you are not coming this is not how to get me you get me by washing the one you have it's a rubber shoe wash it it's a 200 naira trouser wash it are we together now we live in a society that applauds people for living a fake life that claps for people for jumping seasons and as soon as they clap for you and as frequent as they clap for you that's the same way they will clap against you because every time you jump up you must go down but when you grow up you remain up the difference between jumping and growing is that you are still connected to your root when you jump you are suspended nothing backs you no support so you must come down when you grow up the tallest building in the world is still connected to the earth that's why it stands nothing suspended has an a, a, the ability to stay indefinitely when they send satellites to orbit the earth and orbit other planets and all of that after a time requirement because they are not connected to the earth they must be sent back planes don't fly indefinitely in the sky they get to a point where they must make contact with the earth again for some of you here this is your miracle service tonight the Lord is speaking to you you are living a fake life go back to the basics let me tell you this don't ever generalize success just because everybody around you is successful does not mean you are successful go back and learn the principles corporate success is deception are you hearing what I'm saying now we are all successful a day will come life will separate you and you stand as an individual and it will be a test of your values whether or not it's like a defense the way students do defense you will need to defend and validate your success any door god has not opened for me i'm not under pressure to go because when he opens it he will open it in honor do you know if god does not open a door your tenacity can force that door to open that you forced a door and it opened a man can go around with complimentary cards i'm a man of god i'm a gospel artist in fact you've not had anything like you just invite me and watch what happens you can go around and out of the 1000 invitations you beg for you may get one or two or three or four and you call it increase you see when you open the door by yourself you have to keep it open by yourself but when god opens it god when he opens it he keeps it by his own hand the hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be afraid there is a hand that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be hallelujah years ago i had a conversation we're about to pray 
with a gentleman and he asked me a very honest question he said apostle i've come for koinonia and i've seen the crowds of people and he asked a question he said can you reproduce these results and i said that's not me to answer you are asking time not me keep watching and i think two weeks ago he sent me a text you know just joking I'm, I'm just saying it and he's just sent a text and he said apostle you are dangerous i say i'm not dangerous the laws of god are dangerous it is not me it is the laws of god whoever will keep these truths it will work for you are you getting what i'm saying even if you are afraid of yourself trust his laws and watch them shock you and make a wonder out of your life brothers and sisters listen to me in a few minutes now we're going to begin to pray and many of you will stand and watch your life change as if it's magic it is not just because a man who is anointed is standing before you there is a system in the kingdom we make our boast first in the lord and then in the power of his might his might the power of his might the power that is released when his laws operate those who don't understand will look at these things and think he's boasting it's not boasting it's true the predictability of god's principles hallelujah i challenge you today that much more than the miracles you are receiving you must trust god to go back and say lord teach me your ways we reign in this kingdom we're about to pray now i want to show you a very dangerous scripture that god opened my eyes to brothers and sisters if god does not open your eyes to see how a thing works you may never know do you know that in every challenge that you have right now a way of escape is there but it takes god to open your eyes psalm 77 turn there let me show you something psalm 77 and verse 19 psalm 77 verse 19 give us from amplified if it's possible lion of judah my trust is in you alpha and omega my trust is in you i am that i am my trust is in you tonight i put them on you my trust is in you it says your way in delivering your people was through the sea listen carefully the same sea that was an obstacle he said their way of escape was inside that water inside that trouble he says and your paths through the great waters how can you be in trouble and god says in that trouble that's where your answer is but it takes your eyes to see it god hides a formula in your pain and keeps it there until revelation opens you to it he says your way of delivering your people was through the sea the same sea he said that your path through the water yet you pass through it and cover it and nobody can trace your footsteps this one give us king james again it will take revelation for you to know how can i look at him water challenges and great waters he said thy way is in the sea in that rain challenge is a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing it says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known god what kind of god are you you do something and cover it so no man can just look and say ah I... but when he opens your eyes all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part i never knew and all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the egyptians will think and god will cover it and say i don't open it for everybody it is a way but not for everybody 
are we together these are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense shout jesus keep quiet it does you will try it and it won't work it's a mystery there is a way in it there is a pathway that when god opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them god is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying the answer is already within your environment all it takes is for your eyes to see hagar was punished by sarah the bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test the young lad cried to heaven when an angel appeared all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water the water was there but her eyes could not see the ways of god and let me tell you this is why we come to how to the house of god because there is something about the corporate gathering of god give us verse 13 of the same scripture give us verse 13 of the same scripture go ahead and read thy ways oh god where is it is found in your sanctuary when we come here it says in your sanctuary in your house you have you have ordained a place that when we meet you will show us a way when god put this miracle service and call this ministry and put all of these things it's not just a ritual there is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained that every time you come before god he must open a way so don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say i went to every church i don't know what the church you went to believe but in this sanctuary there is a way there is a way i dare to tell you there is a way man of god i have been in i've gone everywhere with all due respect i don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary solomon dedicated a place and said lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill daniel in the days of that of, of nebuchadnezzar daniel opened the gate and faced jerusalem he, he was afraid he couldn't depend on his faith he opened the door and said lord i engage the covenant that covenant that solomon made with the temple in jerusalem it is not only a man that can bring miracles a place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven tonight i want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices pastor femi thank you thank you so so much praise the lord many of you have come from several places you have made sacrifices please don't come here wasting your time and don't come here wondering let's see what god will do already i can answer you you won't get anything already let me let me be honest with you because god is not a magician but there are people that come here determined and say lord i have seen you in this place i can't go back this way that something must shift in my life something must change in my life not all of you may be trusting god for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting god for one thing or the other i like you to believe there is a way in the sea i bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. That's a part of this song I like. Though we are few, there are witnesses. There are people who have been healed. 
there are people who God changed their lives overnight. There may not be many, but they are on earth. Testifiers of his faithfulness. As a testament that if God did it before, he can do it again. And this is the song. It is our confidence in God and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of God and access to the ways of God we are we are scammers we are not we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know god by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 it says if ye have heard paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of god which is given me to you what for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did paul know it by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden they are there the same way many people swam through the red sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given the revelation of feet worship a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it people had communion people take communion in orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk but somebody came with a light about communion and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die there are mysteries brothers and sisters there are many people that never knew that the house of god is powerful praise the lord are we together so you must understand that god in this season wants to shift you but he won't just shift you just by saying shift there are mysteries tonight i bring you a word there is a way in the sea hallelujah there is a way there is a way there is something god can do about your finances there's something god can do about your family situation you left fire on the mountain and came back you wait until the red sea parts and god will rubbish pharaoh tonight in your presence rise up on your feet begin to thank the lord for what you have heard tonight cry for the grace to be faithful go ahead cry for the grace to be faithful
cry for the grace to be faithful lord grant me the grace to be faithful grant me the grace to stay as you lift me grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life grant me the grace Grant me the grace. Hallelujah. Just pray one prayer. Lord, change my story. Visit me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith. Change my story. Visit me. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Tonight is an unusual service because time has gone. We are going to be very, very fast. Very, very fast at that. Um, like I told us, we are going to start praying for the sick. We'll start by praying for the sick. And um, now this is how we're going to do it. Because of, because of, those of you outside, don't worry. You don't worry. Wherever you are, you will be attended to. Are we together? You will be attended to. So, hold on. Before I ask the people to come, you don't have to. Just cooperate with the ushers. If they need you to do anything, just, just, it's a temporary inconvenience we're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do hallelujah praise the lord now please hold on let's let's not be distracted those of us who are trusting god for healing is a miracle service it's not just limited to healing but we're going to pray for the sick now now we're going to do this very fast and um, please those that will be ministering let's let's do it very fast it's not in how long listen let me tell you something about the anointing it's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency just a touch is enough for the anointing the same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it the wonders are done i'd like you to believe god to touch you change your life whether it's a blood disease whatever it is let's agree with you hallelujah We'll do that very, very fast. While we are doing that, please, um, if you have come with your requests, ushers, um, please help them. PR department, you can join them. Protocol, let's just join and see how we can make this very fast. So that at the same time, we are collecting the prayer requests. Remember, it's not a ritual. Um, when it's time, when they come to you, you can hand over the request. If you are yet to write yours, you can quickly do that those online following us from whatever nation you can just connect your requests are already there and we're praying the power of god will touch it there too hallelujah praise the lord please i like you to be very intentional i know that most times we do this at the miracle services but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this and then at the same time waste your time i have seen the power and the glory of god um, upon my life and upon this ministry in in ways that that are humbling in ways that are powerful expect a testimony please refuse that you're not going back the way you came no matter what the medical situation is remember i told you there is a way in the sea there is a way hallelujah when i do that um we'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time praise the lord father we're gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power lord we're about to minister to those who are sick and lord we trust your power to heal we trust your power to heal to the uttermost in the name of jesus anoint my hands anoint every man and woman of god who will be ministering to the sick let there be the hearing of faith let there be the walking of miracles do this and glorify yourself in the name of jesus christ praise the lord uh, father we give you all the praise 
let your power flow let miracles begin in this place we give you all the praise we give you all the honor in the name of jesus christ i pray amen please make sure that while you submit your prayer request be in the attitude of prayer if i were you i'll be praying in the spirit don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sick god bless you Deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name. Yes, you deserve the glory. the honor yes Lord we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great yes there is no one else There is no one else like you Yes, you are great And you do miracles so great Oh, there is no one else like you Oh, there is no one else like you Saying you deserve the glory, say you deserve the glory and the honor, Lord, and the honor. So we lift our hands, so we lift our hands and worship as we praise. As we praise oh, 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 yes, you deserve the glory. Why we worship tonight so we lift our hands and worship as we pray your holy name give you your the miracle there is no one no one else that can touch me like you do they can heal me say there is
Let every other name fade away The name of cancer, the name of HIV Let every other name fade away ha! The name of arthritis fades away Let every other name fade away ha! Jesus, take your place
after me in the name of Jesus we are praying now please we are praying say in the name of Jesus shout it in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight I challenge you lift your voice and begin to pray everyone Every force, every force, nothing will stop your lifting. This is a season of lifting in the name of Jesus. Set! Pray, pray! Every song shall be broken. You will have the victor's crown. Say in the name of Jesus, every recurrent pattern in my life right now, I declare you destroyed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Challenge every recurrent pattern by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern. Abo sabala kato pa shabrenda gedea. In the name of Jesus, say after me. In the name of Jesus, every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight, I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace, every dimension of grace, Kabala ko shabala raba, shida 
Every dimension. Make sure you are praying every dimension, every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life upon my family and destroy every planting that is not of God lift your voice and pray let your fire the visitation of your fire the visitation of your fire upon my life upon my life pray let your fire fall upon my life let your fire bring a separation lift your hands I'm about to pray for you now. We are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils. There are lives and destinies that are under the yokes of darkness. It's time for the devil to give up. Are we together? Are you ready to shout that name that is above all names? Let me tell you, I want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder working power of God in your life. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name, Jesus, everywhere. And as you shout that name, the sword of the Lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you. Are we together now? Especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time. I'm ministering deliverance now. Every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life, as you shout this name, May the visitation of that fire. Are you ready now? One, two, three. I command the fire, the fire of the spirit. Bring them up. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, every altar and everything, every high thing that is not of God, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. Shukete ko satavali akatoch. Hallelujah. I think the ground is good enough. You can bring them. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying now. I'm still praying. Anyone's destiny that is under siege. Right now, I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing, I'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people if it falls on you your destiny is opening up lord where are they i stretch my hands may the visitation of fire open destinies now shake it to kata kata open destinies now open destinies now inside outside open destinies now open destinies now hallelujah i'm seeing a horn and i'm seeing fire burning it please be sensitive this is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families he said in zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18 what's yes thou he said four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against jerusalem against judah so that no man does lift his head he said but i have sent four carpenters lift your heads i'm praying right now in the name of jesus the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside 
in the name of Jesus anyone here suppose Sekatos Kabariakata under any kind of demonic siege at the count of three that horn that symbol of authority that has tied your family that has tied your life it is uprooted one two three I release that fire now I release that fire now I release that fire now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost anyone here whose life is under siege be delivered now hallelujah the Lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness but then he's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you the womb is the place where seed is planted that womb can be anything a woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase there are people a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed the way it is physically that's how it is spiritually you receive the word but it never produces it's barrenness you receive finances but it never multiplies it's barrenness lift your hands as i pray listen many people many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer you will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer lift your hands i'm praying now that in the name of jesus ah i tell you all i see is just fire that's what i'm saying every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now by the fire of the holy ghost i declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now by the anointing of the holy ghost overflow one i'm seeing three people I'm praying now I know because of time we can't let you come in but I'm seeing three people two are ladies one is a gentleman this prayer is for you there is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming overflow one on people outside the Lord is bringing massive deliverance barrenness is a dangerous thing listen whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time because it cannot grow it cannot multiply jesus saw the fig tree it was taken from the earth taken from the earth but it was not producing in the name of jesus i'm still praying that prayer again that any life here that satan has rendered barren i stand by the anointing of the holy ghost and i decree and declare be delivered right now deliver right now from every siege of barrenness be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness hallelujah Kemi who is Kemi Kemi um, I may not maybe I may just talk to one or two people Kemi you are wearing red it's like it's a guy called Kemi who is that you are wearing red what's your name uh -uh, i didn't i'm saying this is i'm saying i know that kemi is a lady's name it's not a guy i will pray for you it's your hunger this is you are wearing red what's your name your name is kemi yes sir you are wearing red i'll pray for you but gentlemen you are here there is a hunger that you carry listen you came from ah uh, i'm seeing cross river yeah? Cross River. Cross River. Cross River. Yes, sir. yes, sir. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, listen to me. Yes, you came because of a hunger yes, sir. to truly get an anointing. Yes, sir. But you see, this message I preach was for you. Yes, you heard what I'm saying? Yes, this running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works. The Lord Himself, He will give you an anointing, but He will give you direction. What you need is an encounter with the word and direction, but you will never go back the same. Receive that anointing. A new dimension, a new season. My dear, there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stir up that spirit, that dimension. 
I open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit in the name of Jesus as I'm praying this I'm seeing number 11 the same thing that came on this lady the anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people there is the spirit of prophecy where are they I stretch my hands right now 11 people 11 people scattered inside and outside in the name that is above all names receive that spirit you need it I stir it up from your spirit man I stir it up from your spirit man the grace for prophecy Makatos Kabarakata sons and daughters stepping into dimensions of prophecy some of you you have only had dreams only dreams but I shift you to dimensions of visions prophetic visions you will never be the same I'm still praying this I'm still praying this there are people this is your call but no anointing has ever stirred it in the name of Jesus I shift you in the spirit into that anointing the very anointing the seat of the prophetic I move you by grace in the name of Jesus Christ I activate it I activate it that dimension I'm praying I don't know why God is moving this way there are people the call of God is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of God is upon your life but tonight as a token the spirit of God is visiting you whether you know it or not Lord where are they I stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of God is upon your life for your destiny in the area of the fivefold, I declare let the anointing of the spirit locate you as it locates you the Lord begins to prepare you where are they receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace hallelujah there is a dangerous spirit our time is up hold on but there is a spirit that i want to rebuke now i just saw written in the air rejection hold on many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you you stand you are watching and an opportunity come rejection is not just a state it's a spirit lift your hands don't pray don't do anything just lift your hands hallelujah that's the instruction the lord is giving me just lift your hands just do what i'm asking you to do in the name of jesus many of you will be surprised now there are people it's like a yoke i'm seeing like cowries these cowries that they use that's what i'm seeing and in the name of jesus christ as the power of god is smashing that rubbish that's how many people who have been despised been despised the bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you it says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations right now i stretch my hands from the front to the back overflow one two three the roadside and online if there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection right now in the name of jesus in this silence may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance right now i'm praying it's happening right now taking away that spirit from your life please be sensitive we are doing a quick walk rejection 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 by the anointing of the holy ghost rejection i command that spirit to leave i'm still praying i command that spirit to leave i command that spirit to leave alongside with this there are people bad luck good things must always turn to evil when it hold, when it enters your hand no matter what it is if they give you money something must go bad 
a good opportunity it must be destroyed you enter a relationship something must happen i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege here at this miracle service fire 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 i release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back inside outside i command your deliverance right now i command your deliverance right now i command your deliverance right now keep your hands lifted and pray mighty things are happening in the spirit i ask us to pray a prayer that the lord put in my heart patterns i'm still seeing it again there are some of you the same thing happens to every member of your family at certain seasons everything must happen either somebody dies or someone doesn't marry straight and correct you must have a child before you get married or something someone will rape you someone raped your mother someone will rape some kind of nonsense patterns in the name of jesus at the count of three i want you to shout jesus lord i pray that as your people shout that name every pattern that happened to the fathers that is about to replay itself in the life of your people let it be broken at the count of three one two three i declare those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now hallelujah the spirit of delay god is taking delay from someone's life that's what i'm seeing god is taking delay i'm seeing it going delay 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 not everybody but i'm seeing god is it will surprise you after this miracle service the kind of speed that your life will enter delay hallelujah my dear come this come this is your first time here where are you coming from you're coming from abuja yes. i want to pray for you you had the prayer i just said we should pray yes. that prayer was was for you don't be embarrassed eh? there is a spirit of delay that must live your life you are a great lady but i see delay come it's a demonic spirit and if you are not delivered and you get up and go to abuja just like that it will be as if you did not come before the presence of God but I lay my hands upon your head and in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of delay I call you by name let this lady go now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit go now live her life forever in the name of Jesus that lady wearing lime cloth you this one come quickly please Look at me. Salvation has come to your family. The month of June. Look at me. The month of June, I'm prophesying by the Spirit, is the month for your family. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's changing everything. Everything completely by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. I'm hearing a name, Doris. I'm hearing a name Doris. Doris. Who is Doris? I'm hearing a name Doris. Doris. Are you Doris? Your name is Doris. I'm going to pray for you. Your name too is Doris. That's your baby. I will pray for you. Look at me. Look at me. Shout Jesus. My dear look at me witchcraft i'm stretched the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands in front of you i stretch my hands and i declare i'm seeing an altar catching fire in the name of jesus christ i declare it by the spirit i stretch my hands that's what the lord is saying i should do i stretch my hands 
it catches fire now oh oh oh, 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 oh. victory belongs to jesus victory belongs to oh, oh, oh. Look at me. Where are you coming from? I'm from Congo. From Congo. Hold my hands. Say shame and reproach. Shame and reproach is taken from my life. Is taken from my life forever. Forever. Say it again. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Victory belongs to Jesus. Shame and reproach is taken from your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Shame and reproach is taken. Hold on, I'm not done with that. I decree and declare that shame and reproach is taken from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's father has not been paid for 11 years. I'm seeing, I don't know what the condition is, but I'm seeing at, at 11 years or so, your father has not been paid. It's something they have been pursuing. Please make sure you are honest. Who is that? Come. Your dad, where is he? He's in Lagos. You too? Where is he? Do you believe that if I pray for you, a miracle will happen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we make it happen by the Spirit of the living God. I decree and declare that between now and the next 90 days, let there be a miracle. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you all coming? Your parents. No, don't. I, if, if I pray, most of you, it's not, it's not that word. You are just coming just because you want... It may be related in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm just praying for you. As I'm touching you, you see, let me, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You see this touch, you see. This touch, just this touch, you see. There is power in it. It's just that we are very carnal people. Do you understand? After service, you can hug me and jump on me. But now, what is on me is what makes this touch different. You see that? You can, you can have... It's not just a touch, maybe a touch for... Jamborean. No, 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 no. You can, I can lay my hands on you, right? And then something can come upon you. I can lay my hands upon you and then your life will change. Sometimes you see me just speak and you think it, as, as I pray like this, you see, watch your life and see what it becomes. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? That's, that's, that's the point. The word of God that you can't see it does not mean it's not resting on you. When it rests on you like a hen over her, her, the eggs, it will stay there until there is a performance. This thing you see is not just power, it's authority. It's authority. There is authority in the spirit. It's not just, just sit down and we keep watching. I, be, just the fact that you are here within this vicinity alone, let me tell you, whether you are inside or outside, your life will never, never be the same. If I never get to touch you, speak to you like this, the word of God carries the anointing. Do you understand? It's not just until maybe you, you make contact and lay hands and some of those things are just psychological. It is the power of God. As I'm talking about, it is the power of God. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny.
the face of development lord grant me the discipline 